I just uh, write a book about um, uh, the question of the nation and the relationship between the nation and the left at the European level. And I have a spe specific interest for the Austrian conception of the nationality. So uh, my topic today is uh, Otto Bauer from the critic of nationalism to the contestation of the colonial order. So um, Otto Bauer's book in 1907, The Question of Nationality and Social Democracy, was published in the context of an important event that led to reflection of nationality, the first Russian revolution of 1905, which started in St. Petersburg in January 1905 and had across throughout Europe. Uh, let's take further the situation of the so-called Austrian party in 1907. But this year, there are 87 social democrats were elected in the parliamentary group only 50 were austrian uh, austrian german so deutsch österreich and 24 were czech the rest were other nationalities of the empire the fact that otto Bauer's work focused on the historical significance of the slavic peoples should be seen in this context it was imperative for social democracy as a world to respond to these new challenges of the nationalities. One of the response of the Austrian party was the creation the same year of the famous theoretical journal, so Der Kampf, the fight, whose first issue appeared in 1907. And it's very interesting to read the editorial of this first issue because it made clear that the Austrian had a specific role to play in the international labor movement. The editorial reminds us that the Germans have shown their decisive role in theory, the English have developed a trade union model, the Belgian a cooperative movement, and the French finally have carried the revolutionary tradition and the parliamentarism hide. The recent evolution of Russia, on the other hand, uh, testify to extension of capitalism outside Western Europe, preparing for social and political change to come. And the editorial of that Kampf concludes with this following, we Austrians had a specific task in store for us. We had and have above all the difficult task of translating the idea of internationalism into actual living reality. Sorry, it's a translation from me from German to English, so perhaps it's not perfect, but I think you understand this quotation. While many social democrats, as the famous Karl Kautsky, remain convinced of an inevitable process of international homogenization resulting from capitalist development, Otto Bauer unfies the rise of the new nation. Quotation Otto Bauer, the awakening of the nation without history is one of the countless manifestations of capitalist development. Here, the distance from certain positions of Friedrich Engels is clear. Remember, in 1848, Engels described many minorities as so-called people without history, especially, particularly, the Slav of Central Europe. Taking note of their persistence and their growing demands, Bauer solved to propose political solutions to adapt in the international idea to the new realities of the 20th century. Especially since in the Austrian part of the empire, national antagonism tend to overlap dangerously the social cleavage. The most famous example is the Czech again. The Germans appeared in the Czech lands as the rich, as the bosses. On the German side, there were a latent anti-Slavism, including in the social democratic milieu. You can see, for example, at the this is an example very well at the moment of Badi Badini Ardens at the end of the 19th century. And so for Bauer and for other theorists of social democracy, it was necessary to act in order to be able to propose a solution allowing socialism to find a way out. And so uh, Bauer uh, first and five, past and future history, which he believes this is for understanding what he called the community of destiny. 
the role for him is very famous for you, I know, but I just remember the role for, of the territory is to be relativized as a coincidence of territorial state and nation, which, for example, in the French conception of nation, state and nation uh, coincide. And in the Austrian case, it's different because of the multiple nationalities. And so, of course, you, there are lots of things and lots of questions in this book. Uh, I just want to focus on different point and uh, come uh, to another point, which is not so famous in other texts, which is specific the colonial question outside Europe. But first, a few words about language and migration. Bauer's conception are uh, pragmatically influenced influence, sorry, by uh, the social and economic realities of the Habsburg Empire, Habsburg Empire, sorry, it's French pronunciation, so Habsburg Empire, understand me. Article 19 of the Basic Law on the General Rights of Citizens of December 1867, which is um, you have the compromise between Hungary and Austria, states that all national groups are, quotation of this law, equal in law and must enjoy the inviolable right to preserve and cultivate the nationality and language. And so the language, um, the language of you, so Ungangsprache, our Deutsch, the language can vary depending on age and the context in which one lives. And Otto Brauer's parents, for example, take a, a biographical elements uh, coming from Bohemia, spoke Czech and told it to the son. So this is a factor that also the choice of language of use is a mobility of the working class and the workforce. For the generation born between 1870 and the beginning of the century, there was a rural exodus from Bohemia, Moravia, or for others uh, part of the empire, Galicia, which led them to Vienna or to the new industrial center of Upper Austria. Um, lots of children spoke Czech at home and learned German at school. And so Bauer, which is concerned with this problem, pays a great deal of attention of this migratory phenomenon. And for example, in addition to, is to this book, if you read the Kampf, if you read the uh, Austrian newspaper at this moment, there are a number of contributions on their issue, on the issue of the migrations. Take just one example of one article. In 1908, sorry, um, Josef Zeliger posed a question in an article in the theoretical journal Der Kampf. Starting from the linguistic map of Bohemia, he notes that the important migrations took place from the agrarian center to the country to the industrial margins, for example, so for the Czech part to the German part. And so he distinguishes two stages in the Czech progression. At the beginning, the phenomenon of national minorities is more or less almost non-existent. The assimilation of minorities does not seem to pose any problem. Then, when the exodus became massive due to industrial development, national minorities were formed and assimilation were slowed down. The Zeliger asserts that it was German industries that produced the Czech minorities. The employers built workers' colonies outside the city where the migrant workers settled. The life of Czech communities was reconstituted and national demands arose even in the social democracy. And so Bauer's question and answer are inseparable from these new realities of migration in the Austrian empire. Other point on uh, Bauer's conception, which is not perhaps uh, not the most famous, but perhaps it's uh, interesting for a, a French historian because it's about um, uh, how Bauer write his history of Austrian Empire. What is the narrative? Because the, narr the narrative aspect uh, for history is very important in the case of French socialism. But I think it's a more general question for the workers' movement in Europe at this moment. Because for me, Bauer is a critic of the official narrative of the Austrian Empire. His work is convinced as an alternative history to the official Austrian narrative. In a way, 
It is a question of proposing a socialist equivalent to the great enterprise launched by the imperial regime. The letter seeks to promote a particular identity that respects the specificities of different peoples in the form of multiple historical narratives. So the question of nationality and social democracy, Bauer's book, can first be read as a grand narrative of the German and Austrian people, but a kind of, as we say in French, a peuple nation, people nation, if you want, um, a kind of um, kind of false Geschichte uh, that is not fixed, closely linked to the evolution of social classes, commercial exchanges, and the reality of minorities in the empire. Moreover, in Bauer's book, what's especially interesting too, um, the writing of the book, as you know, it's a big book, it's very dense, full of data. Some passages tend to return to the utopian juror that was so familiar to the socialism of the first, of, of the first uh, 19th century, sorry. Harmony must triumph. A new humanity with all the nation can be born. All peoples are or should be uh, equal. Each nation can in the future specialize in the long term in an agricultural or industrial field, allowing it to exchange with the others. Socialism must take this diversity into account in order to question the world division of labor developed by capitalism, which in addition to, the sep to separating the population between bourgeois and proletarian, has also produced strong inequalities between the different nations going so far as to deny any rights to some of them. So in this perspective, the plurality of peoples rather than a problem can, be, can become in the future a world uh, quality, rather a future of prosperity and shared happiness. This, this utopian aspect for me is important too in the narrative of uh, Bauer's book. Bauer developed so an original perspective, but uh, without radically distancing himself from a rather classical conception on another point. The socialist traditions uh, with Kautsky and other uh, theoreticians prefer large ensemble to a small structure, where the essential difference is felt, especially with the spirit of many revolutionary, as in Gilson, uh, revolutionary of 1848, um, is a clear refusal of any Germanization of minorities. But where was in fact in the favor in a certain sense of the Austrian-Hungarian framework and opposed to any secessions wishing to reform this vast in symbol. It is true that the social democrats would theoretically have preferred to live under the banner of a German Republic. And here and there, we can see this Republican hope emerging, but Bauer considered this perspective to be incompatible with the new realities. The framework of the emperor is much suitable than the multitude of small states leading to splintering of multiple nationalities and multiple states. The empire must be reformed and eventually um, republicanize, we say in French, republicanism, but not for better in the sense of unitary and assimilating republic. Uh, another point is, which for me is very interesting, is the debate uh, around uh, Bauer's book. Bauer's book provide a provoked, sorry, a wide ranging a debate in international social democracy. For example, Rosa Luxembourg, her fruit having different conception, found herself close to Bauer in a certain sense. Take, for example, I know, Michael, uh, know very well this uh, text, the National Question and Autonomy, published in 1908, between 1908 and 1909 in Polish. So, more or less at the same time, um, at the time where there is a debate uh, around Bauer's book, uh, Rosa Luxembourg was then at the end of the German speaking and Russian speaking uh, space because she's in, in Poland. Her arguments uh, closely resemble Otto Bauer's preoccupation while validating certain elements of Kautsky. It shows, it's very interesting for me, the hesitation and oscillations in fixing a consistent internationalist position. 
Taking up the argument, she directly develops against Polish independence, as you know, as she was against Polish independence, Luxembourg first targets the slogans of the right of nations to self-determination for Luxembourg, quotation of Rosa Luxembourg. It is a paraphrase of the old slogan of bourgeois nationalism of all countries and all times, the right of nations to freedom and independence. For us, it should be an evidence, but in this context, the right of the nation has no sense for Rosa Luxembourg. Luxembourg, Rightly implies that Marx and Engels, quotation of Rosa too, were far from solving all the question of nationalities according to the same shame, according to a pre-established model, and moreover, how little they care about the metaphysical right of the people when it came to the concrete efforts of European development. And so the emphasis on this so-called right seem to hear all the more hypocritical since the right of the people, so the so-called right of the people was mobilized at the same time about the colonial question. For example, Edouard Bernstein and the Dutchman Henri van Kohl uh, justify exactly at the same time the European colonization with the, the same words, the right of the people. That's the reason because some leftist social democrats don't want to speak uh, about the right to people too. It's very important to connect these different realities. So for Luxembourg, the only self-determination that possible is social, that of the proletariat, which must exclude as far as possible any national perspectives in its demands. So it's different from Otto Bauer about, about uh, this kind of the right of of the nation, there are some, um, some uh, um, how can you say, uh, I think they are not, they not disagree on all points. And Rosa Luxembourg considers that an autonomy of Poland within the Russian framework without territorial cessation can be envisaged while insisting on the very political aspect of the problem since national autonomy, quotation of Rosa, is neither the only political form applicable to all national groups, nor the idol of liberty par excellence, towards which socialists should tend under all existing conditions. It specifies that is the exceptional situation of the so-called Asiatic despotism embodied by the Russian empire that justifies such a claim. In no way it can be generalized for Rosa Luxembourg. But in fact, on this question of autonomy, she's not so far from Bauer conceptions. So uh, there are um, other echoes in Europe, um, especially the debate uh, between um, uh, Bauer and uh, the Russian Social Democrats. So I have a development on this, but so I have only 30 minutes, so I just summarized this point. As uh, you know, there is a, a, a big debate with uh, the famous uh, Stalin, because Stalin write, uh, wrote his book uh, in Vienna, just before the First World War, on the Marxist and the national questions. And uh, this question of the right of minorities and the right of uh, different peoples are very important too. Uh, because, uh, sorry, I, I'm having uh, this morning very late, but uh, I just uh, heard um, Walter speak uh, about uh, the Jewish questions. And I just want to say a few words about the Jewish question seen by Otto Bauer, because it's, of course, a, a major question uh, at this moment. And so, um, as you know, there is a big debate in the Jewish milieu, in the social democrats and socialist milieu, um, Jewish socialist milieu at this time. Um, uh, in 1904, uh, Vladimir Medem uh, published a book, um, uh, so in English, uh, National Question and Social mm -hmm. Democracy, and uh, he's inspired by Karl Renner's conception. And as you know, Karl Renner's conception are linked to Bauer conception, not at all points, but on the question of autonomy, there are some uh, point, uh, so more on the same point. And there is um, a very important Congress of Social Democracy too, the Brun Congress, so Bruno uh, today. Um, uh, and uh, Vladimir Medem has uh, a development in this book about this, the specific rights of the Jew as a nationality inspired by the Brun uh, Austrian Congress. And it is where Medem wished to give great importance to language as a national cultural foundation. And he discussed it's of course the Yiddish. 
and the Jewish Bund, 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 sorry, it's German Bund, so, uh, which emerged from the Eastern European labor movements from a life type of conception in an organizational form. So just to, to recall the, the debate. And so what is interesting about Bauer in 1907? In 1907, Bauer did not apply his raising at all. For him, the modern evolution of capitalism no longer leaves place for Jew. Trades linked to commercial exchange are on the way out. So how can Bauer at this moment explain the maintenance of, of course, strong Jew communities attached to their traditions in regions in the Austrian Empire, uh, especially, for example, in Galicia? The answer is in 1907 uh, obvious for him. On this, and on this point, uh, Bauer agrees with many social democrats. As you know, a lot of leaders of social democracy are Jew, assimilated Jew. And for them, at this moment, the development of capitalism was less in some part of an empire, so the tradition survived. And for them, Jewish tradition, it survival, but not in the future. For Bauer, in, the, in his book, there is a process of gradual disappearance. Yet, uh, Bauer is attentive to multiple realities of the Habsburg Empire. And of course, he did not deny that Austrian antisemitism provoked a refusal to assimilate to assimilation in the Jewish milieu. But for him, in 1907, it is only marginally invalidate the historical trend. For Bauer, he paid a lip service to the fact that autonomy can be conceived to Jew and ad hoc basis. So this point on, on the Jewish question is very important too, to understand the intellectual framework of Bauer. I know uh, my uh, last question is okay, is how this debate, I just say a few words in a few, a few minutes before, but how this debate is linked to the colonial question. As I say, when people uh, at this moment, the direction and the theoretician of social democracy speak about the right to the people, which is of course good, right for people, for everything is good, there is a, a colonial argumentation at the same moment. So I speak a lot about 1907. 1907 is the year of a very important international congress, the Congress of the Second International in Stuttgart, uh, where the question of colonialism uh, is debated. So, uh, debate, sorry. In contrast, Bauer's thinking goes further into the colonial question. In a certain sense, the question of the relation of, between Austrian, Czech, um, uh, Poland is a, is a colonial question inside Europe, inside Europe. But what is interesting for me is to link the debate inside Europe with the extra colonial question. So there is a connection between Otto Bauer's approach to the Austrian Empire and the colonial empire of Germany, of France, of Great Britain, and the other and Dutch um, outside Europe. If militant anti-colonialism on a large scale belongs to a later period, of course, after the First World War and the Russian Revolution of 1917, there it does exist a specific view of social democracy, of part of social democrats, sensitive to the condition of non-European peoples this conception is emerging. And Otto Bauer, by focusing on the fate of Slavic people, such as the Czech of the slave minorities, did he not open the way to a consideration of colonial issues? An article published a few years after his book on the question of nationalities justifies such connections. At least this article is published in 19. Uh, 11, sorry, uh, Bauer deepened his reflection and published, which is for me a significant text on the hist what he called the Eastern Revolutions, taking stock of the sequences opened by the Russian Revolution of 1905. So he speak about Russian Revolution, Iranian Constitutional Revolution 1906, Turkish um, Jeune Turk with Infantry, Young Turk in 1908, and um, 
he finished with the First Republic of China in 1911. And this text of Otto Bauer is rarely mentioned, is not very famous compared to this book of 1907. And uh, for me, it's uh, interesting because uh, the reflection it contains is uh, close to uh, the most internationalist uh, social democrats. And uh, perhaps at this point, it's, uh, it's a uh, we can establish a link between him and Rosa Luxembourg too. So just uh, I summarize uh, and I will conclude uh, this article very quickly. So after a long development on the strong links between the development of capitalism and the colonization of the great powers in the 19th century, the theorist of nationalities drew up an assessment of the revolutions that have shaken sorry, the Eastern countries since 1905. He's particularly, Bauer is particularly interested in the demands made during the revolutionary process in Iran and Russia. During a parallel with the English Revolution, the English Revolution of 17th century, which appealed to the old ancestral tradition to legitimize popular uprisings, Bauer suggests that the upheaval to come in these regions, so Russia, Iran, are likely to resemble 19th, uh, 17th uh, century England more than the logic at work in developed capitalist Europe. So according to Bauer, the popular traditions will play an essential role in the revolution. And uh, just a few quotations of um, a small quotation to, uh, from Otto Bauer on this point. It is only for the link with popular mm -hmm. traditions which distinguishes the recent revolutionary movements in the East from the old liberalism of Eastern intellectuals that the revolutionary movement becomes a mass movement. This article ends with a clear diagnostic announcing a new revolutionary cycle. Perhaps this new cycle to come, or which we had a striking glimpse between 1905 and 1910, will not start in Europe for Bauer. He speak about the new world and the new world for him is Asia, Africa, and he described the old world. What is the old world? Bauer again. If the struggle for liberation of America gave the signal for the European revolution in the 18th century, American revolution, French revolution, of course, it's me, American and French revolution, sorry. The revolution in Asia and Africa will perhaps one day since so the decisive hour in the struggle for the liberation of the European proletariat. Whoever is able to observe the course of world history will not say so. We see the world, uh, the world hard worlds in Dieppe about to give birth to a new world that will be our world. And so um, after this article on colonial questions, Probably uh, Bauer uh, was, of course, uh, too busy with day-to-day uh, -day Austrian political realities. Bauer did not take up such developments, um, but it's interesting because uh, we can establish a link between the development on Bauer's and the very late Marx a study, especially by our colleague, for example, Marcello Musto and Michael Kretke too, and the Rosa Luxembourg positions on the colonial questions. But on so um, doesn't Bauer, by recognizing the persistence of national culture in Asia, in Africa, manage to understand better the motivation of what he called the Eastern Revolution than a part of the other internationalists, because a lot of internationalists are neglecting the reflection of the nation. And Bauer, because he has a big reflection of the nation, can understand, the, of course, the Austrian realities, but perhaps he can understand more better the colonial questions that other socialists in Europe. Mm -hmm. So Bauer seems to understand the future importance of the uprising in the colonized countries, like a part of the Bolshevik with another theoretical framework. In any case, from the workers' taverns um, of Hamburg, I say workers' tavern of Hamburg because um, we have some police reports uh, about uh, about the taverns, and we can uh, they can urge uh, some uh, German militants who have uh, who can speaking about uh, the colonial questions, and we can say so to, from to the militants to Otto Bauer to the Austrian leaders, the so-called East, the 
oriental question, a brief from no, uh, has a possible origin from socialism just between uh, the First World War. And I conclude no, I can read at the same time. So uh, beyond the conventional statements on the victory of nations and nationalism and the failure of internationalism, so the elaboration studied by Otto Bauer present historical experience that provide key elements to the debate on the national questions, the defense or the overcoming of borders, and is well beyond the time. They show the ambiguities, the difficulties, and even the dead end, but also the richness of a political ideological currents, so the Austrian social democracy between the first world war, that try to elaborate about solution to the national question in Europe and outside Europe too. So for me, it is an episode on the long history of socialism, of Marxist theory, and of militant workers' practice too, that still calls for research on discoveries, making it possible to nourish the question to the present. Thank you very much for your attention and sorry about the famous French accent. Thank you. Uh, thank you, jean for this very interesting uh, speech. And uh, we have now 10 minutes for the discussion, for uh, the questions. Of course, the participants present here uh, can ask the questions first. I would say like uh, really, really short questions uh, so that we can use these 10 minutes the best we can. Thank you. Uh, so please, for the for the present, uh, for the people present in the room, use your microphones, and of course, for our participants on Zoom, uh, please uh, use the the chat box. Thank you. Okay, may I start immediately? I I, I heard you. Okay, so fine. Bonjour. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Um, I want to ask you to. Uh, reflect upon a certain imbalance in Bauer thought. On the one hand, he is clearly a German nationalist and he is convinced of the very high stance of German culture, Deutschtum is, yeah. is quite important for him. And he even sees assimilation in the course of the mass migrations already happening at that time within the Austrian empire and beyond as inevitable, not in all cases, but in many cases. On the other hand, I still find one of the most astounding perspectives, which he is depicting in his uh, analysis of the national uh, nationality question, is the perspective of the future. In the future, according, uh, so post-capitalist societies, according to Bauer, all the national differences, the differences of national cultures, nationality characters will become more and more differentiated. So we will have not nationalism, but more clearly yeah. uh, uh, developed, uh, strongly developed nationalities. So a larger variety even of nationalities it will be more unequal, which is in my view, a very attractive perspective uh, so we will become, we will have the uh, context in which we can be as unequal as we actually are, and even more so. So uh, just reflect upon that. Yeah, now I think the, the main project of Otto Bauer is to try, is trying to develop um, national consciousness without nationalism, because. Mm -hmm. It's, if you want to smile, it's very difficult. We know how it's difficult, but um, the difference between, for example, uh, there is a, an Austrian guy, uh, Strasser, which mm -hmm. is one of the most internationalists. He say, mm -hmm. if you speak about nation, uh, uh, you, you will go to nationalism. But Otto Barra has uh, two fronts, if you want. On his right, he has the right of the most nationalist in the social democracy which say German culture is the most important. We have in our memory, 8048, the great Germany. So the big Germany, we have to unify uh, the German culture. The proletariat need one language. If you mm -hmm. want to proletario, mm -hmm. Allerlander, you need one language. Yeah, and yeah. the most common language in this part of Europe is German. 
So mm-hmm. please speak German. So on his right, Otovar asked his um, uh, right. And on the left, he has a lots of internationalists who say, don't speak about nation because you are not, or you are nationalist. So what is very relevant for me about Barossa, he say, uh, we have to speak about nation. We have to give, um, uh, we have to say something about nation and the right of nations, the right of each nation to have a culture, but we, we can't just say, uh, uh, we are internationalists, but we can't just say to uh, the German culture, it's a better. And the watch is very interesting because as you know, uh, Otto Bauer, he's very young when he's write yes. uh, his book. He yeah. has a 28, uh, Michael, yeah? And so uh, for, it's a new generation because uh, his uh, generation before was very uh, marked by the German culture of 1848. For example, uh, Wilhelm Dimnecht is, is that in 90. Oh, but uh, it's a new generation and he, he understands perfectly the problem we can't just say uh, we don't care about national nationalism. It's not possible. But we have to, to, to define a new definition of nation, of not only for Austrian, because of course for Austria, uh, for Austrian, it's because he's a politician of Austria. So we have to say an Austrian answer specific. But when he have a reflection on colonial question and other point, he tried to give, um, a uh, new definition and which it's very uh, interesting for me. Of course, it's sometimes very difficult because some texts are very historical. It's a German and the Austrian and Czech and Bo- Bohemian mm-hmm. context. So it's very difficult to use for today. But if you understand in good in the context, you can mm, take it for today to say, okay, we have two problems. We have many problems, but two especially the so nationalism and the people on the left who say, we don't care about nation, uh, just uh, uh, cross the border. Just, and Autobar try to know uh, the, the, the common people as a relationship, specific relationship with the national culture, and we have to give an answer to them. 